<laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Give God glory for that. How about that? <laughs> I tell you, he's done. I'm done. He's given my speech. <laughs> I, I, I just want to tell you, number one, I'm not standing behind this podium. It's as tall as I am. <laughs> That's why I have a portable mic on. <laughs> but I want to personally say, wake up and welcome. Thank you for coming. And I want to enlighten you on one thing. You are looking at the human equivalent of a unicorn. <laughs> Well, what do I mean by that? I am an unapologetic Christian, constitutional, conservative, pro-life, Second Amendment loving American, and I happen to be black and a Republican nominee in Colorado. <laughs> if you listen to the Democrats, I'm not supposed to exist. I'm supposed to be a government program. And I'm here to tell you that I grew up as a Reagan conservative. And that's how I got, that's how I learned my chops. I tell you, I grew up in a military family. And my mother is the backbone of this family. She is the reason why I'm standing here today. So I always make sure you go home and respect your mothers, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm telling you, it, was, it, was, it means something very important to me because when I came home for the first time in ninth grade. I looked my mom in the eye and I said, hey, I wanted to run for class president. Most mothers would have said, son, no, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to put yourself out like that. She said, yes. She said, we're going to go get in the car. We went and bought supplies to be able to do that. She made sure that I grew up without a chip on my shoulder. I'm standing here today because I had a nice boot to tell me that you can do whatever you want to do. You can achieve the American dream, but you're going to have to work hard. You might fail at times, but it's how you get up and what you do after that. But do not let the government keep you down and don't expect somebody to help you if you haven't earned that support. So that's what I'm here today. I'm here to tell you that it does work. Working hard, you feel good about that. And what I want to do is make sure that you leave here today energized. Because when you're listening to the news, everything's negative out there. We're not supposed to win this race. Everybody's frustrated about the top of the ticket. People are infighting. What I'm here to tell you, that's noise. That's distractions. The reason why they're doing that is because they're concerned. Let me tell you why they're concerned in Colorado. I started my campaign early. I got in my bright red, environmentally friendly Hummer, and I drove around this great state. <laughs> and I did that for a reason. I did that because I wanted to personally go out and talk to people to, so people could look me in the eye and tell me what some of the pain and sacrifices that they're going to have to make and that they're currently making. And I'm telling you, it changes you forever because people are really open to saying what's going on in their lives. And that's when we start talking about grassroots campaign, that's what it's about. And universally, and it doesn't matter if you're a Republican, Democrat, or unaffiliated, they've said the same thing. They're tired of politicians saying one thing and then being elected in office and completely selling out to special interest groups and leadership. And we need to do something about that. And it's, and it's your time to be able to take this country back. And I am just so proud and humbled to be able to be the representative here from Colorado. But the one thing that you are going to hear me focus in on is our tone. Because when you, on paper, when you put the conservative message down on paper, we win all the time. The problem is translating that message from paper into the hearts and minds of people so that they can then act on that. And I'm taking it as my personal responsibility to be able to articulate this message in a way that empowers people instead of makes people feel like they have to pick a side. Because that's what's wrong. We are divided in this country. That's why when I make statements about talking about our president in the fact that we need to be inviting people, we should not be dividing people. That's something that I'm passionate about. Now, we're coming up to this election season, and in my opinion, there's two 
basic choices. We're at a fork in the road, ladies and gentlemen. We can continue to follow the Obama, Clinton, Bennett agenda, or we can choose a different direction. For me, it's a simple issue, but for each and every one of you, you need to go out and have a conversation with somebody and say, do you like the way things are? Let me tell you, as somebody that has worn the uniform and that will put the uniform on at a moment's notice, there are two main issues that I'm concerned about. Number one is the defense of this country. We need to be thinking about that all the time because there is evil in this world. We must recognize that. And in my opinion, we have an administration that has not clearly identified the enemy. The enemy has been testing us. When you start thinking about some of the things that are out there, cyber attacks, these are real. I challenge you to go home, especially if you have kids, and live off the grid for 24 hours. Trust me, you will be begging to reconnect the Wi-Fi. <laughs> but that's reality. That's what's going to happen in a cyber attack. And if we don't prepare for that, that's a major issue that we must address. We also have a, an administration that, in my opinion, has strained our relationship with Israel. And I'm going to tell you right now, as your next senator, I'm going to clearly show that I'm going to stand up and support Israel. Yeah. <laughs> we, we entered into this Iran nuclear deal, what it was designed to bring them to the table, but what we're finding out is it's making things worse. And Michael Bennett was a deciding vote when it comes to that. He should be held accountable for that. But as your next senator, I'm going to stand firm with Israel. I'm going to make sure that they understand that I'm not going to support policies that's going to put them in a military inferior position. I'm going to stand for the fact that Jerusalem should be unified. I'm going to stand for the fact that our embassy should be there. We need to stand for Israel, ladies and gentlemen, make it very clear. We also have the other side talking about Syrian refugees. They want a 500% increase. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are a very free and loving society. The only thing I ask is I want to make sure people understand that it is a privilege to one enter this country and it is a privilege to be an American citizen. And we should respect the rule of law. So we should make sure that if people want to come here, that we have the ability to make sure that they aren't going to come here and harm us. And the other thing that the Obama, Clinton, Bennett agenda has given us is what they want to do when we have conflicts within our neighborhoods. Instead of bringing people together, they're driving a wedge between law enforcement and the very people that they're there to protect. That cannot stand. All lives matter, ladies and gentlemen. I want to bring people together. It's important to be able to embrace that fact, embrace and learn from one another and realize that, look, we live in a free and loving community, but what's important is we want to make sure that our neighbors are safe. That doesn't mean that we, we want to get out and talk to them. And the law enforcement personnel are the first ones that want to make sure that if there are bad cops out there, that they want to get them off the street. The other issue that we must debate is jumpstarting our economy. And you've already listened to the Obama, Clinton, Bennett agenda. And what do they want to do? They want to raise taxes. They want a fairness tax. They want a surety tax. There's, we aren't, what, aren't we concerned about corporate? Reducing corporate taxes? I believe we should. I stand for a reduction in corporate taxes. I personally like flat taxes, to be honest, when we start talking about individuals. But the basic theme is that I believe that you have the ability to use your money more efficiently than the government, and we need to reduce that tax burden on you. <laughs> When you really want to start jump-starting this economy, we need to also do two things. Number one, I am going to push as your next senator national term limits, ladies and gentlemen. We need to do that. <laughs> we also need to have a balanced budget amendment if we're going to be serious about this. <laughs> and we need to understand the role of education in this whole thing, too, because I believe in empowering parents. 
I believe in choice opportunities. I believe that each and one of your children deserve the same choice opportunities as our president's children deserve. Why not? Because I am going to honor the commitment that I made to that young man that I met on my first meeting, where he came up to me, he took an entire week to be able to ask me a fundamental question. And that fundamental question was, are you going to, if you are elected, are you going to continue to help me be able to go to school with my mother? I'm going to honor that commitment, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what matters. We need to make sure our kids have that opportunity to be able to do that. Lastly, I want to make sure that when we start talking about our communities, we want to make sure that we're working together. And in order to work, make sure that we work together, the one thing I am not going to do is I'm not going to put you as a citizen in a situation where you cannot defend yourself against a criminal. <laughs> Criminals don't care about the Second Amendment. Criminals don't care about gun control. The only thing that we're hurting are the very people that are there just trying to protect their families. Let's stop getting so focused on the instrument. Let's start working on the fact that, look, you deserve to feel safe in your home. It is a constitutional right, and I want to make sure that the criminals out there don't have an unfair advantage, and we need to stand for that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're going to do. Appreciate it. I was going off the clock. No, sorry. Okay. Okay. We, we got time for a couple questions. Okay. A couple questions for. All right. Mr. Got a couple questions here. Yes, ma'am. There's one right there. I have time for two questions, because the I'm, clock is ticking. I'm already worried about the sophistication of the left. Hillary Clinton is doing stage sound visual appearances that were, uh, she's got a, an apparatus of psychologists, right. psychiatrists, and semiotic people behind her. You know, we're up against, and you've got two generations of kids that have been given propaganda in school, that's why they turned left, because they were drained of their education. I'm very, I believe these people can be easily influenced by these, these staged uh, propaganda type sound bites that the left is, they're doing it very skillfully. What about the sophistication of that? What are we supposed to do? Well, and, and I appreciate the point, but the main thing is we have the tools, training and equipment to be able to compete in that arena. It's our messaging. We need to be able to make it so that people can understand that. I mean, it's not like we're not, we, we don't have access to te technology, but when you start talking about the effects of climate, and even if you go and believe that, what we need to be able to do is put a human face on that and say, if you adopt this particular policy, this is what's going to happen to a family trying to pay their electricity bill. Right. And when you see that visual effect, and you see a family struggling, going down, having to decide whether to eat or pay an electricity bill, that really resonates with people. What I'm saying is our messaging needs to translate into a visual effect so people can actually see what's going to happen. That's something that we're going to focus in on. We need crisp, very targeted, very focused, simple vignettes. Hillary Clinton is doing those very well. That's Thank you. Saying. And, Thank and you. I agree with that. I have basically a 30-second close, but I want to make sure that you understand that do not leave here thinking that we're angry. Do not leave here demoralized. Be optimistic about our future, because you are moving a day closer to an opportunity to have your say in what's going to happen with the next generation. Use that. Be empowered by that. That's why I put my mission statement out there as being bold and brave. I'm not saying that to try to convert anybody. What I want people to do is understand you have a First Amendment right to be proud of who and what you are. You have an opportunity after living under an administration that has suppressed that feeling to be able to be proud and be bold and talk about those things and realize that when your ballot comes in the mail, if you live here in Colorado, you will have an opportunity to make that decision. 
and that decision will not be influenced by polls. That decision will not be influenced by all of the noise that's going on in the media. That influence is going to be based on your heart and your patriotism because you're Americans. Let's be proud of that. God bless each and every one of you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>Thank you. I, I think we can all be honest with one another. When all of you arrived today and opened your program, your eyeballs went immediately to, ooh, ice cream social. 